<sighs> Good morning, barn cats. How are my barn cats doing this morning, huh? It is another morning that is above freezing again today. It's like 33 degrees. We are having an exceptionally mild January here in Vermont. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. How's it going, pal? How are you doing? How are you doing this morning, huh? Yeah. How's it going, my buddy? Huh? How are you doing, my dude? Oh, yeah, you're such a soft puppy dog. Huh? Did you have a good night? All right, let's go greet the day. Let's tour time. <laughs> Be nice to Pablo, Toby. Coexistence, Toby coexistence. Hmm? Toby. Hey, Toby. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. Everybody's being chill. This is really what I wanted to see. Toby and Pablo, you guys are getting normal to each other. Can you get used to each other? Huh? Yeah? Stay. I was able to get him to stay for that long. I'm already sweating this morning. I think that's what happens when you dress for zero degree weather and end up having 33 degree weather. It's just a weird winter. Not that I'm complaining. Release the Kraken! <laughs> Score a direct hit. So I just had to reprimand Toby. He, I don't know if you guys saw that there, but he started to chase after the ducks. And for him to be a livestock guardian dog, I cannot tolerate just one iota of that type of reaction. So I had, I had to reprimand him sternly. I don't hit my dog at all. I don't use shock collars with my dog, but I do give him commands and I do give him reprimands and I will make him submit, so there's a couple of positions that you can put him in that say, hey, you've done something wrong and you need to recognize that and listen to me. It's something that the, the folks that I'm talking to who are mentoring me on how to train Toby have strongly encouraged me to do. Some people will argue that the only way you can train a dog is with something like a shock collar, which I just don't think is right. Other people are gonna say that I should only be using positive reinforcement uh, with Toby. I know this is a very controversial topic when it comes to dog training, but I I feel like it's really important to show it. Of course, who knows? I might chicken out when it comes time to edit this video. We'll see. I consider that a little bit of a training.
training setback, but we'll get past it. Toby, come. Yes, good boy. All right, let's see what the egg situation looks like this morning. What do we got for eggs? Let's see. This is just the fake egg. It's just a fake egg, and another one here. And we got two more, so I guess three eggs. That's still somewhat low egg production. Um, it's enough to feed Allison, I guess, and give some of the extras to Toby, but uh, I have a theory that some of them are hiding some of the eggs. But we're definitely not selling eggs right now. All right, let's look, Toby. You hiding any eggs down there? Oh, I think I see one. You guys see that? I'm gonna have to reach around and get it. Um, having a loose egg like that's actually a real risk. So either Toby's gonna find it and he might eat it and I am definitely afraid of him learning to eat eggs or it could attract some sort of predators or it could attract some sort of varmints whether it be uh, skunks or rats or raccoons or other things. The trick is doing this without getting myself disgusting with duck poop. I'll just be very careful that I don't break the egg. Yeah, this one will end up becoming Toby's breakfast. When I feed the eggs to Toby, I will not give him the whole egg. What I'll do is I'll crack it open and give him what's inside. Sometimes I might crush up the shell and mix it in with his food. I just don't want him to get the idea that these round white objects are like 10 times tastier than duck poop. Toby, come. I mean, generally speaking, Toby's been excellent with the ducks, as well as with the geese and chickens. But, you know, he's a puppy, and so sometimes you're gonna have setbacks like that. Yes, you're being a good boy, Toby. You're being a really good boy. We just let the ducks go about their business. Yes, good boy, Toby. Yes, you're behaving yourself with these ducks. Come on, Toby. Let's go do the goose and chickens. Hey, geese, hang on. I know, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yep, yeah, out you go. Come on out. Toby, sit. Stay. Stay. Let's go, guys. Keep it down over there, Chuck.
It is really nice to see Toby interacting so well with the geese. He's showing them respect, but I feel like the geese are also teaching him to respect them. Um, whereas the ducks, their instinct is always to just run. The geese have a much more sort of fighty type of instinct. So you hear them hissing and sort of bowing their neck. That's their like pre-aggression behavior. And it actually sends a sign to Toby that he shouldn't mess with them, which is a good thing. We've got more goose on goose violence here. Missed it. I had another situation where one goose was riding the other. And uh, one theory that somebody actually had was that one of the geese, I think it was the one with the gray tips on the wing, was actually a female. And this viewer was suggesting that when I slaughtered most of the geese, I actually separated wrong and I picked a female Emden instead of a male pilgrim. Which I have to admit is entirely in the realm of possibilities. Uh, number one, I don't know geese all that well. And number two, the, the male Emdens, I mean, sorry, the male uh, pilgrims and the female Emdens look a lot alike. The male Emdens are really big, and so I wouldn't confuse them with a pilgrim. But the female Emdens are a little bit smaller, and they're almost the same size as a pilgrim. And so I thought I got them all separated appropriately, but maybe I didn't. I'm gonna have to consult some friends to actually suss that one out. <laughs> 